Welcome everyone to the new Fly Fisher. I'm your host, Bill Spicer. On this week's show, we're in Labrador and we're the guests of Cooper's Manipi Camps. We're going after brook trout and I'm talking about big brook trout. We'll discuss the flies, the equipment, and the technique to take these big fish. It's gonna be a great show, so stay with us. We'll be right back. has been made possible thanks to Orvis Ontario yours to discover Islander precision fly reels on today's show we continue my adventure in Labrador as guest of Cooper's Manipi camps in its wilderness location some 70 miles southwest of Goose Bay Manipi camps offer all the comforts of home with great home cooked meals comfortable accommodations, and services which include wireless satellite internet connections. The lake I'm fishing is called Anne Marie and is known for its brook trout averaging in the five pound area. I'm here near the end of the season to take these fish in all their brilliant fall colors. The previous day I had incredible fishing on emergers and I was quite excited about the same possibility today. But as it is with fishing, conditions had changed and the fish were deep, so a change of tactics was needed. I decided to put on a Type 6 sinking leader with a four-foot section of fluorocarbon tippet attached. I also felt streamers were the way to go, as they produce the most aggressive response with fish. I was reeling in to change. It's, it's pretty slow this morning. Oh boy. I don't know if he's got me under a rock. Oh, there he goes, okay. He did, he had me under a rock there. There we go. Gonna move him around. Oh no. He's in the anchor now. And I lost him. He broke me off. Oh my God, I was just reeling in to change up tactics and uh, he hit as I was reeling in. So I wasn't completely unprepared for that. And then he went down and there's some rocks down here. I felt him get around a rock, so that's probably what did me in. Yeah, he broke me right off. Yeah, broke everything off. Oh, well, that's the way it is. <laughs> sometimes you win, sometimes you lose. Yes, sir. I just, I just lost a big one and re-rigged with the same fly. I got two pulls on it and he hit. Change tactics today. Yesterday I was using emergers. Today I have to go down deeper and into bullet head muddler minnows. But they're all good. I never met a fish I didn't like. Oh. Okay. In, in the water. Okay. Yes, sir. It's not as it's not as big, and Herb tells me it's a it's a female. So I'll show you the difference here. Now, this is a female. Look, uh, the jaw on the fish is, is is straight, and the mouth is actually smaller. Nice little hen. And let's get her back in the water. Wait for her to kick. And away she goes. Now, what I did on this trip was I always had two rods in the boat rigged up. One was rigged up with subsurface and the other one was rigged up 
with dry flies or emergers. This way I could change up very fast when I felt the fish were changing. And like they say, the less time that you have tying on flies, the more time you have with the fly in the water, and that catches more fish. That's the fly today, isn't it? Well, folks, I just released that hen, and this is the very next cast. I gotta get him on the reel. So I gotta hold up my, there we go, he's on the reel now. And he's running towards me. And this one's staying way down. Wow. Wow, we certainly, he's staying, he's sounding right down. Right. Now this one's staying down, which indicates a big fish. The smaller ones will come up and they'll, they'll flop on top. The big ones stay down and they just pull real hard. Oh, and the fly just popped out. The fly popped out. Thank goodness. Oh, this is a good one. Now, now we're talking fish. This is an incredible. Look at the, the fall colors. It's a male. As you can see, that last one had a small mouth. This one's got quite a large mouth with a hook on the bottom of the jaw. Excellent, excellent fish. Fine. Manipi brook trout. Don't get it any better than this. Oh yeah, oh wow, Woo! I'm tired, <laughs> I'm tired. That was tremendous. This is the best brook trout fishing probably in the world, I would say. It's right here in Labrador. Uh, if you want information on these camps, uh, visit uh, Destination Labrador and you get all the information you need. Uh, for fishing up here on the Minipi system up here in Labrador, uh, I generally recommend customers bring a range of rods five through nine, um, but at least having two rods in the six and eight weight category. Um, most people like to fish with a six weight for uh, pretty much all their fishing uh, that they might experience here, but an eight weight is really nice for uh, windy days or for casting big bombers and mice. Uh, fishing here in the Minipi uh, early season, you pretty much only need to use a uh, weight forward floating lines uh, with your setups. Uh, but after, they say, the beginning of August, um, there are situations where uh, sinking tips and uh, sinking lines are more advantageous, especially at this time in the season. Um, having a sink tip or a sinking line is pretty much key. Just hope that the camera can pick it up. And we might have to move to the other side to land this fish, because he's not cooperating very much. I don't know if we got him or not. No, no, we can't no, no, see. No. Nope, missed him. Okay, now another fine 
brook trout. Any? Ah, so let's let him go. Great, great fight. Now this one isn't quite as as crimson as the other one, so this tells me this has just come in to spawn, and it should color up within a very short time. And it's a hen too. Yep, and away she goes. She got full belly; you can feel it. And away she goes. Wow, huh, that's tiring. Whew. Big fish, big fish. Gotta love it. I got another fish on, and I'm thinking it's a pike. He just grabbed it on the way up. I was, I was lifting it up, and oh, gotta get off my line. It's one thing about having a large amount of line out like this. Get it up on your reel as soon as you can. You end up stepping on it, which is not good. Hit it on the way up, like I was, I was lifting it up to go cast again and he hit it. So that's indicative of pike. When they see that change of direction of the fly, that's when they'll strike. But he certainly got the, le the rod bent. Looks like I'm wrong. I got myself a brookie. I did not expect that. Uh, wow, we. There we go. Okay. Okay. And a hook popped right out, so. And this one, it hit on the way up. I, I was lifting up the rod and he, and he hit it. So he must have been following it. Another nice, nice brook trout. And that's another hand, it looks like. Oop, it's a hand. They're not quite as crimson as the males are. And I'm gonna get her back in the water. She's just gorgeous. Great fight. I just love that white streak across the front of the fins. You can see them in the water quite easily when they're up near the top because of that. So away she goes. She looks like she's ready to go. And down. Oh. Now that was that was unusual. I was usually I was stripping it back and I was picking it up to cast again, and that's when the, the fish hit. And that's usually indicative of a pike. Uh, but I was surprised. It must have been following along. Alright. That's that's another, another good fish. One thing about Labrador, when you first get here in the morning, it's quite chilly. So I had fleece on and plus my coat. And now as the day progresses, it's getting quite warm now and we're probably over 20 degrees already. So I'm gonna be peeling this off. I'm getting quite warm. It's a mayfly spinner. I'm not quite sure which which mayfly it is right now. It looks to be about a size 10. Um, these were happening the other day, plus a, we had a hatch of, of this particular mayfly, and that's when I was getting them on emergers. And the fish were quite active uh, just below the surface. You could actually see them. But this is typical of what uh, hatches in this area. Well, it's another morning here at Manipi Camps on... Uh, Anne Marie, they call it. That's the camp that I'm at right now. And we come back to our, fa our favorite spot simply because the time of year that we're here and it's Labor Day weekend, uh, the fish are starting to stack up to spawn. So they're congregating in one area. And uh, this seems to be the area they are. Uh, usually they're spread out a little more throughout the lake and you can, you can get different conditions all the time. But at this particular time of year, they're, they're stacking up, getting ready to spawn. They're not spawning yet, but they're getting ready to spawn and they're congregating in one area. And we have a bit of a narrows here and they seem to like this area. For some reason, they like it. That's why we're here again.
Oh, okay. That fly's working. That same silver streamer. I don't know if it's quite as big as the last one, but as you can see what it does with the rod, they're all good. It's gonna be a while before I get this one up. He's staying down. It's a bigger fish. Extremely powerful. It's incredible. Oh, he's seen it coming. Here he goes again. This is a really big fish. Excellent. Excellent. He gave us a, quite a tussle there. Now, that's what I call brook trout fishing. You got to come to Labrador. Adventure Labrador if you want information around here. Oh, they got information on everywhere you can go, but this is just incredible brook trout fishing. And he he's pretty spunky. I'm gonna get him back down in the water. There are two main flies I use today. Both were streamer type flies. The first is a hair wing silver minnow. I believe the red butt had a lot to do with the success of this fly. The second and most successful fly of the whole trip is a muddler minnow. I used it in two colors, yellow and orange, and I also used it with and without a cone head. Here's a tying recipe for the muddler minnow. The hook is a Mustad R74-9672 in sizes 2 through 10. The thread is 6 aught black. The body is gold mylar or polyflash. The rib, which is optional, is gold oval tinsel. The underwing, gray squirrel or brown calf tail. The wing, mottled turkey quill. The collar, deer hair. And the head is deer hair spun and clipped to a ball shape. I see a mayfly finally. Oh, he grabbed it and he, oh, burnt my finger. Whoa. That was a hellacious hit. Oh man, he burnt my finger. Now the stripping motion I'm, I'm using to entice these fish is just this, about a 10 inch to 12 inch pull. Fairly fast. I've got a, a good sink tip on there, plus I got a piece of split shot, so it's right near the bottom. But just like a, a small minnow would swim, that's how you would uh, strip this in. Again, I'll show you. Okay, so you get it behind your fingers, and just about a 10 or 12 inch pull. That's about as fast as I'm going, and it seems to be the right speed. I think if I went faster, it would bring the, the fly up too high and it would go over top of them. I believe all these fish are near the bottom. Nice thing about this is it's pretty much a straightforward type of stripping motion. Nothing fancy, you don't have to twitch it or nothing like that. Just a straightforward pull. Like I say, the fish are extremely aggressive right now. They don't want anything around them. And they're slashing out at everything to uh, keep it away. So just like that. And people notice that I use the water a lot to, to load the line. I've got a, a sink tip on there and it's not always easy to control. So if you let it touch the water, it loads up your rod and you can pitch it back and then give it one final cast. I'll show you here. Okay. I let it touch the water like so. Pick it up. It's called water loading your rod. And then I can cast it right out one more time. There we go. He's staying down deep. It's a brook trout. It's a brook trout. 
surprised me. He ran right at me, and I, I never seen that happen before. Not not in this trip, anyways. This is a good fish. It's all wrapped up in the line. It looks like. Yes, sir. I'm certainly glad I changed up flies. This has been the hot fly this morning. Oh yeah. They are extremely aggressive right now. I know, <laughs> sorry bud. <laughs> there we go, we should get him now. Good man. Well, that was an exciting, this, this fly there, they don't like it around them. The aggression is, Im is immense. Just this, nah, not a very big one this time. I got him in pretty quick. And again, very small this time, but uh, small compared to what I've been catching. But I haven't met a fish I don't like, that's for sure. And, it, and away he goes. Well, as another fish rises, we have to go. Well, I hope you give Cooper's Manipi Camps a call for your next trip to Labrador. For more information on this show and others we have in our series, visit us on the web at thenewflyfisher.com. From all of us here at The New Fly Fisher, thanks for joining us, tight lines, and we'll see you next week. The New Fly Fisher has been made possible thanks to Orvis, Ontario, yours to discover, Islander Precision Fly Reels,